Hello, everybody. My guest today is Depoprio Ghosh. She's the CEO and founder at a company called Rowango. He's an AI and ML, which is an AI, that's artificial intelligence and machine learning based retail analytics and proximity marketing technology company. He's also the co-founder and CTO of Sustainalize, which develops AI and ML based simulation software for chemical and materials research and development. Boprio, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, I am. Very good. Let's jump in here. So let's focus on, well, just to be clear, are you running two companies right now, Rewango and Sustainalize? Yes, I am the founder and CEO of Rewango, and I also happen to be the CTO of Sustainalize. Okay. Which one do you focus more of your time on? Well, I focus more on uh, Rewango okay. uh, because it's my baby. It's a product I have built myself. Sustainalize is mostly uh, the product that my co-founder who did his PhD, it, it comes out of his PhD. Okay. And I help his uh, science into convert it into a software. So you're a nice guy, right? Or he pays you a lot of money, so you had to say yes. No, I don't get paid a lot of money, but I'm a nice guy and I'm <laughs> a very focused guy. All right, tell us about Rwango. What's it do and how do you make money? So uh, at Rwango, we uh, do something called as proximity marketing. Uh, now, proximity marketing uh, mostly is done with Bluetooth beacons, uh, what, which are basically tiny sensors that retailers put in their stores and so that... Uh, whenever their customers are near the store, they can send them marketing communication. The problem with that is not many people keep Bluetooth enabled on their phones. So only very few people are able to get these messages. However, in Rivango, we have a plan. And uh, so what we have done is we understood that most people keep Wi-Fi enabled on their phones. So we created this unique proximity marketing technology with Wi-Fi protocol instead of Bluetooth. So we have Wi-Fi beacons instead of Bluetooth. So uh, the reach is 10 times greater than Bluetooth beacons with our technology. Got it. And what's the business model? Is it a SaaS play or pay-as-you-go or what? Yeah, it's a pay-as-you-go model. Uh, so uh, uh, our customers are mostly retailers uh, and uh, retailers like malls or shopping, uh, you know, restaurants. They pay us per location per month. So we generally charge around $25 to $30 per location per month. We have been deployed at more than 500 locations around the world. And uh, we started around three years back and mostly we have been selling for last year and a half. Okay, so with 500 locations at 30 bucks pop, what you guys are doing about 15 grand a month right now in revenue? Uh, and a little more because there's a one-time set of fees. So as we get new customers, uh, we do around 15K and a little more. Got it. What, sorry, that setup fee you said is 15K? No, no, the setup fee, no, we do 15K in monthly recurring and a few thousand oh. more uh, on top of that. So what's a setup fee for a new location that's about to start paying 30 bucks a month? Oh, just around, you know, around $1,000 to $1,500. That's just because we, uh, it's not a multi-tenant software. We deploy it individually for each client on our secure cloud. So it's the setup charges and, uh, you know, training them on using the system. Is there an on-prem hardware component that cuts into your costs as well or no? Uh, The sensors, uh, the on-prem hardware components are the sensors that people use. So these are little tiny little square boxes. Are they expensive? Uh, no, they're not. They're just like around, you know, five or ten dollar devices. That's it. And where do you have to? So I, I want to you. I want you to really give people a picture of this. Mm-hmm. I'm walking through a mall. I walk into mm-hmm. one of your client stores. If I look mm-hmm. really hard, where will I see these beacons? Are they at the entrance? Are they on every shelf? Where are they? They have. They, they, you are not supposed to see them. So they uh, kind of put it at uh, places mostly a little high where there are less obstructions. Because the lower you key, uh, you put them, uh, there are more number of obstructions uh, that kind of affect the range of these devices. So they generally, uh, you find uh, pillars in these large mall setups, right? Uh, they're little, uh, look at a little high, about 10 feet above the, you know, from ground level on the pillars. Got it. Okay. And what range do these things have? They can read anything within how many feet? 100 feet? They, uh, around 80 feet is our tested range. Uh, you know, we can assure that it go works up to 80 feet. Although we have, a uh, you know, special, uh, beacons, which have antennas where we have extended the range up to half a kilometer for certain specific special use cases. But yeah, generally the off the shelf beacons that we sell have around uh, 80 feet as the range. Okay. And these are just because these are Bluetooth, not radio frequency identification devices or active RFIDs. No, these- these are not Bluetooth. Uh, I, I, I would say these are uh, not RFID devices. These are hybrid beacons which have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I so see. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi, most people keep Wi-Fi enabled on their phones. So the reach uh, uh, for proximity marketing with a technology like ours is 10 times greater I see. than with just Bluetooth devices. 
take us back to the backstory here. When did you launch the company? Oh, we launched it around uh, 2014. We started building this product. Uh, so it was uh, it all started when I visited US. I was in Sunnyvale and I was visiting a Macy store there, and where I I I I never knew even about Bluetooth beacons, and I found some of this small round. Uh, you know, funny devices, uh, cute devices, I would say, on these stores, uh, you know, all around. And I, I asked, what, what are these devices? They said they are Bluetooth beacons. And the first thing that stuck my mind was, well, I don't have Bluetooth enabled, so I'm not getting all the deals and communication that they're trying to send me. But I have Wi-Fi enabled, so that's where it stuck. And said, so, okay, can I re-engineer uh, or create a device uh, that works on the Wi-Fi protocol and not on the Bluetooth? Does any of your uh, as- system tie into the... Um- you know, a lot of shipping companies or inventory management companies leverage our active RFIDs on every single product. It's basically like a barcode. Does your technology tie into that at all or no? Uh, that is an emerging uh, area because we have inquiries for uh, a logistic uh, company, um, you know, who want to track their, uh, we're based presently out of India. So, these devices, uh, so they wanted to, and we are a vast country, so they wanted to track uh, their uh, containers, uh, you know, so, and apparently they said RFID for certain use cases were not very stable. So we are, in fact, doing a pilot with them. So we are we are looking at how this space is evolving. But yes, uh, you know, the initial... Uh, feedback is that yes, it can work definitely for even logistics. Yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of companies. Actually, anyone listening that has their own physical product should be thinking about this. But there's a lot of companies I speak to that do volume at a large scale. I'm talking hundreds of millions of units that are moving essentially from barcodes to some sort of active transmission system built into the tag True. fabric. Um, Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. not not only for the inventory management, but also for so they can track sustainability things where was it from right what's the embodied energy exactly. how much the, what, what how much gas was emitted from the cargo container that this shirt came over from you know china on that kind of stuff and that all ties back into what i'm seeing is an emerging space which is what you're in which is kind of oh by the way we can tie the deal mechanism for the store back to that shirt's tag so it's 10 percent off right now if you walk in the store and buy that is exactly what uh, an inquiry that we received from a large apparel company in india Exactly. I mean, it seems almost you are their agent talking to me. So <laughs> no, Nathan, it's it's a hot space. It's a hot. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, look, definitely. The, the other reason I think this trend is going to continue is because if people want to compete with Amazon, where you have the yeah. the the checkout that doesn't require a human, and no one wants to do those little self checkouts where you just walk through something, right. that right, has to right. tie back to some kind of signal in every you know, device, right. right. Or in right. every piece of, in every product, essentially. Do you think by the way right. that Am- the Amazon concept will work, will, will take off? I think so. I think so. Uh, it, 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 there, ha- there will obviously be corner cases, uh, and usability issues, but I think it definitely is the way forward. Uh, how do they I, work? Is it Bluetooth technology? How does their system work? Well, I think Amazon works, uh, with Bluetooth as well as, uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, because I think uh, they don't, they're very closed about what exactly works. Uh, but I, I hear from, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to take the name, uh, but I hear from guys there that they're using Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. Bluetooth for uh, near field communications or, you know, communications that need much more granularity and Wi-Fi for a little far away uh, communication. You know, one one concern I have about this space is why is Wi-Fi is very uh, easy to hack, and if you have a meaningful mm-hmm. amount of stores, uh, you know, following this Amazon model, if I'm a terrorist in 2022, you mm-hmm. know, you know, injecting a piece of code that basically marks up the price of everything by a, a thousand x, so all these consumers are being billed. You know, they think they're going to have a hundred dollar mm-hmm. grocery bill when they walk out, but actually, it's a ten million dollar grocery bill kills their bank account. I mean, I'm really worried about that kind of stuff. How are you thinking about cybersecurity relative to your product? Uh, we don't have what you're talking is something looking forward to where we have pricing and other information into the system, into the hardware, and there, from there it goes out. Uh, I would say you inject blockchain into this whole equation, and uh, you know the whole uh, infrastructure becomes much more secure. So are uh, you so an ICO? Uh, yes. Oh, you are. You're playing an ICO. Yes, yes, yes. We are looking into it very actively. Uh, but, uh, you know, it all depends. Why We're is everybody... Huh? 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, why is the, your question is, why is everybody talking about ICO? Well, no, why my, my question was going to be is, why are all the VCs saying only shitty companies ICO? I don't know. I, I, I heard completely different thing in Europe. I just come back three months from Europe and everybody, all the VCs are talking about ICOs. I don't know. It's, in, it's different in America, it seems. Yeah, there's a few. There are many investors are going, yeah, only our bad, only our portfolio companies who are struggling are the ones that are thinking about an ICO. But ultimately, look, I think maybe there's some truth to that. But also, you know, raising capital via blockchain is a significant threat to raising money via VC if it takes off, right? And if it's sustainable. So they obviously don't want to see that kind of stuff take off too much because it threatens their ability to get deal flow. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Where I are you guys at? You're wearing a Techstars t-shirt. How much have you raised? I, we haven't raised anything from Techstars. This is from my other startup where uh, I just come back from their Techstar cohort. Very good. Uh, so you're Berlin. bootstrapped. Yeah, bootstrap, completely bootstrap. That's great. It's a very beautiful place to be. What are you at now in terms of team size? We are a seven people team. Seven? Uh, based on seven people team in India. Okay. Me and my co-founder and, uh, you know, five other developers. And how are you, so you mentioned you're out across 500 locations right now. What does it cost you to acquire a new location? Very funny. I mean, we, we got this lead uh, while our product was still under development through our website inquiry. And, and we got around four leads. And uh, between these four customers, uh, they basically had 500 locations where they got. This How'd deployed. they find you? They found us on the website, old, good, simple website, searching on the Google. Has it, have you lost? Because you, because you see, Nathan, I'll, I'll try to add it. It's because people do realize that Bluetooth has its limitation with proximity marketing. So uh, I, the, our customers tell us that they searched for Wi-Fi and they found nobody. And we are the only guys in the world who do Wi-Fi based proximity marketing. So, uh, so they found us because we are the only one there. Yeah. Interesting. Um, have you lost any locations? What's your churn? Uh, we haven't lost any locations as of yet, but there are a couple of locations where the, I would say the locations shifted or the store closed that locations themselves. So, you know, obviously those, but we haven't lost any customers. Yep. Very good. Uh, Debo Porio. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. what is the last business book that you read? I, I didn't get that. What was that? What's the last business book that you read? I read the book from, you know, uh, Mom Test. What's it called? Mom Test. Mom Test? Mom, M-O-M. -M. Mom, oh, the Mom Test. The Mom Test. Oh, funny. Okay, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Bill McDermott, SAP. Who? Bill McDermott, SAP. Oh, at SAP. CEO yep. of SAP. Yep. Yeah. Number three, is there uh, a favorite online tool that you have? Uh, yes, IFTT. I just love IFTT. IFTT. If this, then that. Number four. How many hours of sleep do you get every night? Four hours. Three to four hours. Three to four hours. You're killing yourself. I know. Uh, that's the perils of doing two startups at the same time. All right. And how, uh, what's your situation? Married, single, you have kids? I'm about to get married and uh, I will be getting married this April. Oh, very cool. Okay. But uh, no kids yet, right? No kids. And, and how old are you? I'm 29. I, oh, I just turned 30 this on 14th of December. Very yeah. good. That's exciting. All right. So busy. You forgot your birthday. Last question, Debaporio. Take, uh, take me back to uh, 10 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? 20 years old, I was dropped out of college and I, all I knew was that I need to develop uh, a product that makes me $10 million. I'm still searching for it. Uh, hope so. This will be the one. And what do you, what's a lesson though that you wish you knew back then? Uh, you know, don't work for money. Uh, don't work for money. Money would work for you. I love that. Don't work for money. Money will work from you from Debo Prio. Again, he's involved in many different companies. His current one uh, that he's really focused on is Rowango, which he launched in 2014. Their team team of seven using uh, Bluetooth plus Wi-Fi to do proximity marketing in a very accurate way. Got four leads through their website when they launched, which spans now 500 locations. Each location pays $30 uh, to, uh, to obviously be installed. They're doing about 15 grand right now per month in revenue. Economics, it's a little too early, but their team of seven is hyper-focused out there in India. Debo Prio, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. It was a pleasure talking to you.